Somebody once told me that I should raise the backs of my hives and slant them forward. Why would they do that? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome to day six of our beekeeping tip of the day. Today I want to talk to you about a little tip of raising the back of your hive. Now, if you're not familiar with beekeeping, or even if you've been beekeeping a couple of years, but you haven't really been doing a lot of formal education, you might say, why would I need to raise the back of the hive? There are two primary reasons for this. Reason number one is that if it rains, so let's just say as an example that you and I are looking at each other, right? I'm facing you and I'm the entrance to the hive and I'm tilted backwards. And let's say you get a big, heavy thunderstorm driving rain. You can actually get a lot of rain and water that goes, you know, into the hive. Now, that's not usually a big deal, but if you have a colony that's not really on top of things from a hygiene standpoint, that bottom board can get pretty nasty. And what can happen is that rainwater can come in, it can mix with all the debris on the bottom board, and then you create this little habitat of its own where you got like small hive beetle laying eggs in there and other things going on. It's really important, one, that you keep an eye on those things to keep them clean, but also be trying to breathe, you know, the right genetics into your apiary that have that hygienic behavior. But the rain coming in from a storm is really not the biggest issue. The bigger thing that I think we can tackle by lifting the back of the hive up just a little bit goes back to yesterday's video where we were talking about condensation. If you have the hive and it has a little bit of a forward tilt to it and there is some condensation along the top of it, what can happen is the condensation before it drips can kind of roll down and then it might come down the front. I mean, I, obviously it's not perfect. If you had a lot of condensation, it's gonna drip down, but it's kind of one little extra thing you can do to help out. Now, I've got a couple of pictures here to illustrate this. So this picture right here is my beekeeping pride and joy. This is my favorite colony ever. It was a five frame nuke and I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with them. And you can see here in the picture, I've got a regular traditional hive stand and then I've got a bottom board turned sideways. And then I've got this nuke sitting on top of that. But if you look in the back where I've circled here, you can see that the back of it is elevated for the purpose that I just got done explaining to you. But this colony is kind of funny because I threw another nuke box on top. I'm like, well, I'll figure out what I want to do with them later. And they were just exploding. I just I couldn't contain them. So I threw another one on, threw another one on, and, and they were fun. I ended up making a lot of breeder queens from them, and they were a really good stock for a long time. So that was pretty cool. In the queen excluder video, you saw where I had you know a reduced entrance to basically the smallest size, kind of a middle size. And then we had no entrance reducer. And then we had the entrance completely blocked. All I did was I took about a 16 inch piece of wood, just measured the front of the entrance to your hive and just cut the piece to size. But I had about a 16 inch piece of wood and you can put that in there and block the entire entrance. Now you're probably saying, well, Jeff, if I block the entrance, the bees can't get in and out. The only times that you really need to completely block the entrance is if you have a robbing situation. So you recognize that things are getting out of control for whatever reason. Maybe you use hardware cloth. That's what I would prefer to use. It provides more ventilation, but you can always just throw a stick or a block or something in there to completely block that entrance. So I took that same piece of wood that I used from the other day in the video, and you can see here that I put this right up under the back of my screened bottom board. And that gave probably about like a half of an inch or so of elevation to just lift that up. So it's really easy to do this when you have individual hive stands. But one of my favorite ways to set bees up is I'll do a couple of center blocks and then I run four by four posts across. I'll put two of them on and then you'll have one hive facing this way, the next one facing that way, and they just kind of go back and forth. Whenever I do that, I always have a bunch of those three quarter inch blocks, just like you see here in the picture with the five frame nuke where I've got four hive bodies stacked on top of each other. I'll put a bunch of those little blocks behind them and then they all end up having that little bit of a tilt and it works great. But you can see here, like I've done on this pallet. I mean, this pallet's pretty beat up. It's a piece of junk, but it's what I had on hand. So that's what I used. A lot of times when people are moving, particularly for pollination or any kind of commercial services, they'll have a pallet that'll have four bottom boards on it facing different directions. Well, you're not going to be able to slope that, right? You may show up on an, on an apple orchard somewhere and you drop a pallet and, you know, you're not out there with levels trying to make sure that everything is perfect. There are some situations where you just can't do it. And in a situation like that on the pollination contract, 
I'm not really that worried about it. I don't really care. But if you had things in a more permanent configuration, you can level the pallet as an example or whatever you're using as your bottom. And then you can just put a slight lift to the, to the individual bottom boards. There was a company years ago that was making an actual sloped bottom board, which I thought was pretty cool. So the edges of the bottom board itself were, were normal, but the wood that was on the inside was actually cut into it at an angle. So that would work great for that part of things where you're trying to get any moisture that came in to run out. That doesn't help the situation of what I'm really concerned about. And the thing that is a bigger issue to me, which would be the condensation dripping down. And again, having that slight tilt to the front should help with that. Well, folks, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you for stopping by. I definitely appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind gently tapping that like button for me, and if you found some value in the video, please consider subscribing. And if you didn't, if you thought it was a piece of junk, let me know in the comments what I can do better. All right, folks, take care. Be kind to one another. Remember that I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. We'll talk to you soon.